Hello, my name is Margaret Murphy and I'm a crime writer. I've been writing crime fiction since 1996. My first nine novels were psychological suspense, all written under my own name. Uh, but for the past seven years, I've been writing under two different pseudonyms, forensic thrillers as A.D. Garrett and two serial killer thrillers as Ashley Dyer. This year, I changed publishers. I'm now with Joffy Books and I returned to writing psychological suspense and my own name. Um, so this one is published as Margaret Murphy. It's set in Liverpool and before he kills again, teams up Detective Cassie Rowan with a psychotherapist, Alan Palmer. They are searching for a serial predator who has been prowling the streets of Liverpool and abducting young women. I'm going to read you um, part of chapter three, which introduces Cassie Rowan. Chapter three. Cassie Rowan tore through the twilight gloom, arms pumping, her fists punching holes in the thickening fog. She screamed for assistance, but none came. He's so close. Her stupid shoes didn't have enough grip and he gained crucial yards. Her fake fur shrug slipped from her shoulders, pinning her arms and she threw it off, losing a few precious paces. She screamed again into her body mic. Officer in pursuit of suspect on Jamaica Street, heading north, have eyeball Furman, repeat, in pursuit, request assistance. Then abandoning code names and protocols. Wixie, get your lazy ass over here. They pelted past warehouses and lockups, their quarry's feet thudding heavily on the pavement. He darted left without warning and sprinted across the street. He stopped into, she swore softly, no road name. Watkinson maybe, or Bridgewater Street. Where the hell are you, Wixie? A car turned the corner the headlights throwing long shadows into a gathering mist, grill lights flashing blue and red. DC Roy Wicks leaned out of the window and yelled, Go get him, tiger! The fleeing man skittered off the pavement and pounded across a tussocky strip of grass. His way was barred by a grey zinc alloy fence. DC Rowan eased back, keeping a few yards distance between them. He was well over her fighting weight and once cornered, she knew this man would not hesitate to use his fists against a woman. But he didn't even slow down. He charged the fence and it vibrated like a tuning fork. For a moment she thought he was trying to shoulder his way through. Then he swung two of the spiked palings sideways and squeezed through the gap. Rowan's eyes widened. Police! she yelled. Stop! To hell with it. She wasn't going to lose the bastard now. She ran forward and he tripped over the lower baton of the fence. She dived for his trailing leg, wrapping both arms around his calf. He kicked out, forcing the air from her chest, and Rowan loosened her, gi her grip. One more vicious flick of his foot, grazing her cheekbone, and he broke free. But the heel snagged on the baton, and he lost his shoe. Rowan groaned. She was caked in freezing mud. Her cheek oozed blood, and her lungs creaked with the effort of every breath. She heard car doors open and slam. The two tosses in the unmarked car had finally got moving, but she didn't wait to see if they followed. She rolled on her elbows and scrambled head first through the gap in the fence. That was part of chapter three from Before He Kills Again. And if you enjoyed it, it's on offer at the moment at 99 pence or 99 cents if you're in the USA or Canada um, on Amazon.